This video is about soil texture. Since this is my first video on the soil science chapter, I have to explain a little bit about what soil is. Soil is a physical medium in which plants grow. It's formed from rock that's been broken down over a very long period of time, and it takes on the properties of that rock. The soil that you stand on is not just solids. There's also pore spaces in between the solids. Soil that's ideal for plant growth is about 50% solids and about 50% pore space by volume. The mineral component, which is what is derived from the rocks, is about 45% and the organic matter about 5%. Don't let this fool you, even though it's a low number, its contribution to the properties of the soil way exceeds its small footprint. And then on the side with the pore space, should be about half-half, 25% each of air and water, but that's going to fluctuate if you just irrigated or if it just rained, then you'll get more water for a little bit and then it'll drain out and then you'll have more air again. And this is in a good soil. You can have really bad soils where you have a lot less pore space and you have very little organic matter. Now on to soil texture. Soil texture refers to the size of the soil particles. And there are three main categories that we're concerned about. Sand, silt, and clay. And you can see their relative sizes. There's also larger sizes like gravel, cobble, but those don't really affect the soil as much. So we're going to ignore those. Sand particles are between 2 to 0.05 millimeters in size. You know what sand is. You can see the individual grains just with your naked eye. And when you rub it together, it's going to feel gritty, but they don't stick together. Silt particles are smaller and range from 0.05 to 0.002 millimeters. You're not going to be able to see them without a microscope. When they're dry, they will feel smooth and flower-like, but remember, probably not feeling individual grains. And when it's wet, it's not going to feel sticky, but it'll feel smooth. Clay particles are less than 0.002 millimeters. When it's wet, the clay is going to feel very sticky. It's going to hold together really well. When it's dry, it forms hard clods. If you have a soil that shrinks and cracks when it dries, you most likely have a clayey soil. The difference in shape is that clay particles tend to be flatter. So for a given mass, they have a really high surface area. And just like the organic matter, you only need a little bit of clay in the soil before it has a high influence on soil properties. Suppose this is sand and it's only got six surfaces and so it only has so much surface area. Whereas in a similar volume, but with smaller particles, not only do you have the original six faces on the outside, but you also have everything that's inside on every single face of those smaller surfaces. This is shown as a cube, but clay particles are flat, so there's even more surface area. When it comes to soil, surface area is really important because it's the space on the surface of each particle that allows biological and chemical processes to happen. It also helps to hold nutrients and water for plants to take up. This here is a soil texture triangle. If you know what percent sand, silt, and clay you have in your soil, you can figure out what class of soil you have. Let's say you have a sample that's 40% sand and 20% silt. You come up here and then you find the 20%. That would also make it a 40% clay. So that gives you kind of a clay loam or a clay soil. You can see here, every soil class above this line has clay in the name. So you really only need about 20 to 25% clay to make that a fairly dominant trait. You'll often run into the term loam with sand, silt, and clay, but it doesn't describe a particle size like those three terms. What it describes is one of the soil texture classes. It's a mix of the three particle sizes, but in proportions that get you the benefits of each of the sizes. For example, you only need a small percent clay to get the benefits of clay because of its surface area. And then you can have a higher percentage of sand and silt to get good drainage and so on. 
soil texture is basically going to stay the same unless you took a whole bunch of soil out and brought in new soil. You can see if you're somewhere up here in the clay soil, there's such a huge percentage of replacement before you get into anything that's considered nicer, like the loams. It's just simply not practical to do something like that. You don't want to willy-nilly just add stuff to your soil and think that that's going to make it better. For example, sand is known to have good drainage. If you go to the beach, the waves come up and once they leave, the water's all drained out of the sand already. So you might think that if I add sand to my soil, it's going to increase my soil's drainage. But what it does is it introduces a larger particle size to the soil that has difficulty making aggregates. And we're going to cover that in the next video. And so now you basically have this tiny but dense piece of rock in your soil. Your other soil particles are just going to fill in around it. And it's actually going to create more of a concrete-like denser soil mixture than if you had just left it alone. So instead of trying to change the soil texture, what you want to do is work on improving soil structure using organic matter. That's going to be in the next video about soil structure.